my name is Joe Gascoigne. My company is A-Frame Golf, and we are looking for £125,000 for a 10% equity in the company. Um, I have in here um, a golf product, as you, you may have guessed, that is actually 85% lighter and 65% cheaper than its nearest rival. Um, this is it when it's been flat packed, and this is how we send it out to our, to our customers in a jiffy bag, mail order sent out to them. Inside here is the product setup, which I will show you in a minute. Okay, this is the A-frame. So what advantage have you got? Well, it's a performance enhancing product and it weighs about 12 ounces, which is about 350 grams. The normal golf bag is around about 1.2 kilograms, something like that. So there's a massive weight advantage. What does that weight advantage give you? Well, when you're playing a round of golf and you're carrying around five kilograms worth of clubs plus a bag, it's very, very tiring. So what it allows you to do on the back nine, maybe you're playing some quite good golf, but you find that your game and concentration are starting to wane, this allows you to power on through and uh, perform better. So it can actually uh, reduce your handicap and in increase your, your enjoyment of the game. How is it carried? Well, it's carried, carried with a dual shoulder strap, which is here. I'll take my jacket off for this because I don't play golf with the jacket on. And so you picked up, I'm right-handed golfer, picked up with one hand, put over the shoulder here, and worn like this. So in terms of playing a normal round of golf, it's, it's played in exactly the same way. The idea in the long run is to sell it to one of the major sports manufacturers or get a very, very good licensing agreement. Thank you very much. Joe Gascoigne's looking for £125,000 in exchange for 10% of his business. Basic questions first, how much does this thing retail for? Okay, it retails for 55 euros in Europe and 65 in the United States or the rest of the world. Um, and your cost of manufacture approximately? Uh, we're making it for 10 US dollars. And how have you funded this to date? Um, it's been some private investment from my, uh, my business partner. Um, we got uh, a venture capitalist firm invent, uh, invested um, some money to get 20% uh, of the company. And we raised a, a government DCI back loan as well. Um, how much did the VC invest? Uh, they invested 100,000 euros. 100,000 euros? Yeah. And what percent? And they got 20,000, 20 percent of the company for that? Yeah. And you're in business already in producing these things? Yeah, we have sold about uh, 1,250 products. Um, we have also given away some promotional ones in the first year. We gave away about uh, just 100,000 of promotional products. And what's your current sort of level of sales? Probably doing about 75 to 100 a month. Doug Richard has found out that Joe has already sold 20% of his business to other investors. Joe knows he'll have to be careful how much he sells to the Dragons if he wants to keep control of the company. Sales of the device are slow so far, and Duncan Bannatyne is already unimpressed by what he's heard. How long have you had this product available for sale? Uh, it's been available for sale for about a year and three months, something like that. So really it's sticking to the shelves, isn't it? It's not selling. Uh, it's not selling as we would like, no. It's, n it's not selling, it's just not selling, period. It's selling. Well, very slowly. Not as quickly as we would like, no. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a reason anyone would want to buy this product and not an ordinary golfing bag. Um, you said it was performance enhancing. Yeah. That's because it weighs less than a golf bag and therefore it's easier to carry it around the golf course. Yeah, that's one of the, one of the, one of the benefits of, from it. Isn't yeah. an electric cart that a little bit easier it, it, than this? Well, this, this, this is, I mean, we're trying to encourage, not, not, it's our product, so we're trying to encourage golfers to walk the golf course. Well, I've listened to what you've had to say, Joe, and you made a good presentation and you're a good salesman, but even still, I believe you've got a product that doesn't sell properly because it's not wanted by its customers enough for it to sell properly. And so, uh, for that reason, I won't be investing in your company. It's a bad start for Joe, who won't be getting any of the £125,000 he's looking for from Duncan Bannatyne. Rachel Elnor is also struggling to see the appeal of the product. For me to invest in something, I have to kind of know a bit about the, the market and, and where it fits, and just to get a sort of mental hook into will it work or won't it? And I, I don't have that at all with this because I'm not a golfer. 
I don't know the market. I don't know what else is out there. I don't know about whether it would improve your handicap. So it's not the kind of thing that I'd invest in. Rachel Elnor isn't interested in the A-frame golf club carrier, and now the pressure's on. Joe needs to convince Doug Richard, Simon Woodruff, and Peter Jones to come up with the cash he needs. Can you just take me through what you do and what you, what's got you to here? So I was actually doing a, an MSc in engineering product design uh, many, many years ago, five, six years ago, and I had to do something. Um, one of the courses was um, quality engineering, where we reduced something to the minimum number of parts. So I was a keen golfer, still am a keen golfer, uh, and this is what I came up with. Uh, but my full-time job is, a, is as an area manager, manager of a recruitment company. Still being that area manager recruitment company, you don't have a lot of faith in what you've developed, that tells me. Um, it's not that I don't have a, a lot of faith. I dedicate an awful lot of my time um, working on this. What I don't have at the moment is enough in the company to pay me a wage to be able to support my family. I mean, my, my business partner works on it full-time. I think it would be good if we can get him up. Well, yeah, uh, And fantastic. see him, actually, yeah, have okay. a chat with him. The Dragons are going to hear from Joe's business partner and brother-in-law, Mark Newson-Smith, who works for the company full-time. He's in charge of promoting and selling the A-frame golf club carrier. Mark, well, we've, we've brought you up just to really take us through what you're currently doing, because we have understand that you're working full-time on this project now. <coughs> That's right, yeah. Um, going well? It's going well. I mean, <clears throat> we haven't made the sales we wanted to. We feel that it's a product with enormous appeal when people see it. The problem is getting it to the broader mass market. If I was to take a club now and take a shot, yeah. could you just do exactly the same? If you put it on your back... Yeah. OK. A bit of room there, Mark. OK. So. OK. So You've just you... sort of that, and I've got now... I've got about 230 yards. I need to take a three wood. So you need to put your bag down and yeah. go and get a three wood. OK. So, 230 yards, three wood. You're off. Peter Jones seems to like the product and still wants to know more, but the other dragons have heard enough. My instinct in five years' time is that you will sell a lot of these, but you will sell them not because it's lighter, but you'll sell it because it's cheaper. I, I'm not going to invest, I'm not interested in it. It's too big a gamble for me. Simon Woodruff's out, and Doug Richard is also preparing to end his interest in Joe and Mark's business. I'm not a golfer, therefore I don't have a particular sense of this, and you have done very little to persuade me that the market, that this is a must-have product in the market. So I'm out, and good luck. Joe and Mark must now try to tempt Peter Jones to invest the whole £125,000 they need to be successful in the Dragon's Den. At the moment, they're only prepared to give away 10% of their business. I want you to consider a couple of things. One is that if I was to, to be interested, you, you, you're going to have to sell it a little bit harder to me with regards to the percentage, so you're going to have to give away more than what you're offering. 10% um, is not going to be of interest to me, uh, um, but... I'm a, I am interested. I think that there's a lot that could be done with this, mm. potentially. Um, it is. I mean, the golfing market is enormous. But can I just... Sorry. Wait a second. Sorry. The second thing is, though, so that's one thing I just want you to consider. The second thing I want you to consider is, Joe, if you were to get an investment today, uh, I, I personally would need commitment that actually you leave your job um, on Monday and you resign from what you're currently doing and you put 100% into making this work. So there's two things I want you to... Consider. I'm going to give you plenty and that's of time. That's for the full investment we're asking for. It, it would be for the full investment. Peter Jones seems willing to invest the money they need, all of it, but he's insisting Joe leave his current job and work full time on the A-frame golf club carrier. He's also looking for a better deal than the 10% share that Joe and Mark are happy to give away. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know en enough about your background and your, your success in business. What do you feel, having seen this, that you might be able to offer us in terms of expertise rather than, than the money, if, if anything else what, at all? I have a lot of very, very close friends um, that are actually in the sporting world. Um, so for me, to get uh, access to people that, would be t that we can use as testimonials, um, mm. you know, I'd, we'd be talking 10 or 15 people <clears> pretty rapidly, but quite high, talented, current sporting athletes. Okay. It seems like Peter Jones would be the perfect investor for Joe and Mark. 
Not only is he prepared to invest all the money they need, but his connections in the sporting world could provide promotional possibilities for the A-frame golf club carrier. But for this, he'll want a big share of the company. I wanted you to come back to me to give me your absolute maximum shareholding you would give away in your company so we don't have to get into a, a tactical sort of uh, bit of dogfight with regards to share. What is the maximum you'll be willing to give away for, for receiving £125,000? We'd, we'd go to 12.5% for 125 grand. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Mark is clearly not prepared to be cowed by Peter Jones, but a 12.5% share in the company for that price is not going to satisfy a dragon. Have Joe and Mark blown their chances? Guys, to be honest, that's, that, you know, I think you realise that's, that's ridiculously low. You know, oh, well, what's the figure you were thinking of? It's a very clever... Uh, having said that, I do admire it, actually. I've just realised... We believe in it. We don't doing. think we have to give no, no, this no, away. No, no, I admire in the tactic of, of saying 12.5, because you're not giving much away. I quite like the style of negotiation. OK. To make this fair, I'm willing to invest £125,000 for 26.3% of your company. And with that, you will get me um, as non-exec chairman. I would like to have equal voting rights on the board. Mm. And I think that by working with me, you'll not only learn a lot, but I can open up a lot of opportunities for us to push this product into the open market. How do you feel about that? No, it's unacceptable to me. And to you? Uh, I don't doubt your... I, I, I'm sure that what you're offering is, is, is right with your experience. It's just um, not right for us at the moment. And, again, it's, uh, it's something we may turn around and rue, but it's, it's the position we find ourselves in now. Well, it's still valuing your company nearly half a million pounds today, guys. To be honest, if Joe offered me 26.3% for that money, I'd probably buy it off him. Staggering. OK. Um, we believe in it. It's Joe's invention, but Mark is the one leading the negotiations. Remember, they've already sold 20% of the company to a venture capitalist, and now Peter Jones has offered £125,000 for 26.3% of the company, aiming to get an equal share of the company with Mark and Joe. But Mark's holding out for a better deal. It's a dangerous game. Are they prepared to lose out on such a massive offer of cash? I think the offer is extremely generous. So I'm not willing to negotiate on the offer. I'm very set and firm. But I'd like, if you two need to have that conversation, sure. could you not just go away for two minutes? Sure. Say yes or no, and we can move on from there. Peter Jones clearly rates the A-frame golf club carrier, but Mark's unwillingness to be flexible could kill the deal. He's looking at us thinking these guys got absolutely deadly squat. Yeah. You know, he thinks we're poor, which we are. And with his injection, you know, his injection of uh, the expertise that he's got in his connections, yeah. he's not. Yeah. Have a think about it. If he wants to put this money in, OK? Yeah. Someone else is similar will put the money in. This guy's playing hardball. Of course he is. Of course he is, but... OK, so... But we've, you know, he's not that bad negotiation. He thinks he's got us over a barrel, and he thinks that he's going to you know, squeeze us, which is not... Yeah. You know, if, he's, if we said 12 and a half, yeah. he's saying, he's saying 26.3. Now, his real figure's probably yeah. nearer to 17% or something like that. But, Mark, he's got so much muscle behind him. Yeah, but don't be bullied, Joe. OK. I would say don't be bullied. OK. OK. <laughs> it's clear that Joe and Mark are split about whether to take Peter Jones's money. OK, uh, Peter, we've uh, had a little conflab there and um, we've decided that we uh, won't sell the uh, amount of equity you're looking for. OK. Well, I think that's the, that's the end then, guys. But anyway, it's been interesting. OK. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Mark's refusal to accept Peter Jones's offer has shocked the dragons. But Joe has gone along with the advice of his business partner. They've turned down an investment of £125,000. I think it's huge, the potential there. As a gift experience, I think that's quite big. At twenty nine ninety nine, gift product perfect. As a gift product, so you're going to sell tens of thousands of those. Yeah. They're going to look back in this moment and they're going to regret it because money is not easy to find in this world. Well, it was rather like a intense psychological game. That have you any reservations about your walking away from the potential deal there? Uh, not the deal that was on the table. 
but uh, you presumably no, were no. more skeptical about it. A lot more skeptical, yeah. yeah. Don't you think entrepreneurs with their businesses and their hopes and their dreams make the mistake of believing that they can sort of hold a high percentage of something? Uh, yeah. When actually they'll end up with a high percentage of very little, Not and with sure, someone like yeah. Peter Jones in the in their back pocket, they can end up with a smaller percentage of something really, really big. No, yeah, it's a classic mistake that inventors make and small businesses make. But you recognise it as that mistake. I mean, you oh, do see that, 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 yeah, that no, mistake. it's a classic mistake that is made. <clears throat> Perhaps we're falling into the same trap, but we think we've got such a good idea as all inventors, as all do, of them all do, startups do. But we really think that there's enough on the table for us to, to expect to get far more or far less of an equity sale for that sort of money at this stage. Okay, well done, both of you. Thank you very much.